for statecollege.com. I'm Laura Nichols, here today with Wendy Keeler, Donor Resources Field Representative for the American Red Cross. Wendy, thank you for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Now, can you tell me a little bit about what goes into setting up a blood drive on Penn State's campus? We work with many, many different student organizations, and whenever we have a blood drive that is really geared towards the Penn State student community, we work with student organizations from that area. So today we're at Kunkel Lounge across from um, the corner room in, in the Hammond building, and this is the engineering building. And so we work with Engineers Without Borders, the Society of Women Engineers, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and the Engineering Graduate Student Council. And we meet pre-drive to do all the organization and talk about how to get the number of donors there. And then they're responsible for recruiting donors and also uh, providing volunteers for the day of the drive. Wow, so it sounds like a lot of work. And can you explain to us a little bit about how important blood donations are, especially at this time, um, now more than ever, in the wake of Hurricane Sandy? I think a lot of people don't really realize that really blood donation is critical all year long. Every single day, someone that needs a blood transfusion is having a little mini emergency for whatever reason. And so when we have natural disasters like this, people think, oh, I have to go out and donate blood, when in reality, we need their blood donation every single day. A unit of blood is uh, viable for 42 days, so every 42 days, our blood supply is either, it kind of turns over almost, almost uh, you know, monthly. And so we have to have that fresh supply of blood of people coming into our blood drives on a constant basis. And I don't think people really realize that. And for students or community members that may feel a little reserved even still, how easy is it to donate blood? Well, for the most part, about 50% of the population in general is eligible to donate. In the student population, it's up around probably 70 or 75% are eligible but only about 5% of us actually donate blood. That's a pretty telling tale. When you think about the number of units of blood that we transfuse every year, it's about 14 million units of blood that we transfuse, and only about 5% of the eligible population actually donates blood. So for the most part, um, many of you are, many of your viewers are eligible, even though they might not think they are. Just because they've been out of the country does not mean that they're not eligible. They could be. It just We just need to make sure that they've been in an area that is not malaria risk. For the most part, most medicines do not preclude you these days. If you're diabetic, you can donate as long as your blood sugar is under control and you take precautions. If you have hypertension, that's okay. If you're on antidepressants, all those do not defer you, and people think that they do. Wow. And I understand right now is the Penn State versus Michigan State Blood Donor Challenge. What can you tell us about that? The Penn State Michigan State Challenge is in its 19th year, and it's a little sh uh, very friendly competition with Michigan State. We are up in the series 12 to 6. We did lose last year by about 100, about 100 units. But when you put that in perspective, in a three-week period of time at Penn State, we collected almost 1,900 units of blood. And so when you think of it in that, in that way, no one really loses the challenge. But still, Penn State students, Penn State community still likes to win. Great. Well, Wendy, thank you again so much. Thank we you. appreciate your help. Best of luck with the donor challenge. Thanks. For statecollege.com, I'm Laura Nichols.